So this will be part one of a two-part series where I will show how to develop a very simple customer management system. It's just a, a small database uh, program that adds customers to a database, basic information such as company name, address, city, state, zip code, email address, and phone number. The intent of this tutorial is to show basic skills for developing applications that have connectivity with a database. The first part will be direct code, meaning there won't be any division between the user interface and uh, the, the business layer or logic and the database layer. This will be all in one shot. Then in the second part of the of the video series, I will introduce the concept of N-tier programming and show a division between these layers for a more effective and efficient and scalable solution. So to begin, we will create a new program, a new project. It's going to be a Windows form application. And we'll use this. Visual C Sharp, Windows Desktop, Windows Form App, and I'm just going to select my default repository for now. And I'll just create a customer app. I'm adding tests just to differentiate uh, from my solutions and hit OK. So, to begin, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename my form, and this is just good practice so that you don't end up with Form 1, Form 2. And in this one, I'm going to form it to form customers, customers main. And I'm going to go ahead and hit yes so that all the references that, that point to form one are, are also updated. And I'm going to set some properties such as starting position, center screen. And I'm going to edit the text so that it says customer management and of course this could be whatever you guys want and I'm gonna set the back color to white basically the idea is to create the graphical user interface first and you can even create like the the outline of how the how the program will work meaning the the prototype where a user can see how the program will function without actually using the functionality, without having developed the functionality yet. This is good practice too because if you're showing a customer how something will work, it's better to obtain feedback prior to to placing all the emphasis on the code and then something has to change because a customer may not agree with it. So the first thing that you, that you would want to do is really create the, graf the graphical user f interface and, and uh, show how the program will be laid out and how the program will function. Obviously this is for small programs. Bigger programs you would use software engineering techniques such as uh, you know, uni unified modeling language or, or some other methodology where you have the design pre-built or you're building all that design before you you start with the code so for this project I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a data grid and this will be in the data section components and I'll just grow this out a little bit over here and I'm gonna add four buttons And I'm just going to copy and paste so that it's a little bit quicker. I'll worry about renaming them in a bit. Maybe make this one a little bit better and center it. And now I can change a few of the properties. So in this case, what I want to do is create some a flat style. This is just my personal preference. And then renaming these. So this one will be delete, and I'm going to call this BTN delete. I do this in terms of prefix, prefixing because it's easier to find in the, in the code. It's easier to identify. And call this add, BTN add, and this one will be exit.
and the text should show exit. For the second form, I'm going to right click here, add Windows form, and I'm going to prefix this with FRM just so that I know it's form, and I'm going to say add edit customers, and edit this a little bit so the text here will be add edit customers also center screen and also white background and I'm gonna add some components so a label and a text box and I'm gonna need this for every field that I'm going to use and like I said prior to renaming and all that you could just create this and then rename them as needed. So I'll need one for customer name, address, city, state, zip code, and phone number. And these will all be labeled individually. So LBL, company name and I just again prefix this with LBL so that I know it's a label customer name and I could adjust the size accordingly I'm gonna name this txt customer name so prefix with txt for text box and so forth so the final visibility will be this way txt customer name, txt address, and I just I, I did that to avoid taking longer on this part. But essentially it's the same thing as just text boxes and labels. Text boxes and labels, the only difference is this one, this one which is a, a masked text box. And this one would be over here, masked text, text box. And one of the properties of the mask would be this way and it's just so that the phone number could be formatted in reality this only will affect the GUI because the text in the code will still be the same meaning the property will still be the same text value as anything the visual element is what adds the mask so once I have my user interface developed I can add the main functionality and by main functionality I mean just linking from one form to the other so we'll start with exit and in this case it's just more of a end so I'm gonna hit application.exit and this will exit out of the program completely and then I'll add the functionality for the rest of them so in this case create an instance of this and all this is is just creating an instance of this form and then calling show dialog to open it and for right now this code is going to be exactly the same for the edit it won't be at some point but right now it's the same and then in in the add edit customers I just want to add this dot close to close this form up and we test this out So if I hit add or edit, it just opens this, opens this up, cancel, and then exit, completely exits the program. And before I start the code, I want to look at my database. And I just created a very simple access database, and I called it DAT customers with one table called customers. And this have, has a few fields. Customers ID will be the primary key called auto number here customer name, address, city, state, zip code, phone number, and email address. And these the, this will contain the data for my application. And so what I'm going to do is start writing the code for this form. 
in this form because it will communicate directly with the database and it's going to be a, an access database we'll need to create a reference to system.data.oladb and this will provide the functionality for connecting to the database also we're going to have a major distinction and it's the behavior of save and the loading will change depending on whether add was clicked or edit was clicked because if add was clicked then this form should appear blank and save should perform an add function if edit was clicked then this form will load whatever customer was selected in the grid and then the save uh, function will edit the database so that it contains whatever modifications were done so to provide that functionality I'm going to create a variable that's of type boolean called is new and in the constructor for the form I'm going to reference an is new along with something called cust ID which will hold the customer ID in the case that it is going to be an edit if it's an edit it'll just be zero and it's not going to be used and then I need some sort of connection string that I will pass on to my um, that I will pass to my connection my database connection I also want to use another bool that is going to be called was cancelled and I'll show you where this is useful later on it's basically when when a user cancels this form I'm gonna avoid the first form from having to do a reset on the on the database meaning refresh the database since it was cancelled nothing changed it'll ignore that and then I'm gonna create my database related variables and I'm gonna start with my OLADB connection which I'm gonna call it con and my overall connection string along with something that'll hold my customer ID and in my constructor I'm gonna initialize the variables that I need based on what was passed so connection string will equal constring and notice I could have used the same variable name and just use this dot this is just something that I do it's it's a uh, I find it better I find it more readable for me but really it's more of a matter of preference than anything else I know hardliners on the code will be no you should have done this and you should have done that in my case this is how I choose it and it's up to me same thing as it will be up to you guys to develop your own style I'm gonna initialize the connector by calling OLADB which creates a new instance of that class and I pass it the connection string that was essentially passed saved here same thing for is new I'm gonna set was cancelled equal to false and if it's new then I'm gonna to have to load the data I'm sorry <laughs> reverse if it's new I'm not gonna load data so I'm gonna call something called clear fields and I do this obviously it gives me an error because it's not created but Visual Studio is very cool it allows me to click over here uh, where was that click over here and generate the method automatically and on my else I'm going to allow it to generate a method called load fields and there we are so the clear fields function all it's going to do is just set everything to null string essentially this isn't really needed I just happen to like to initialize everything so each 
each one of these will end up being null string. Boy, I'm just not typing today, am I? And there we are. Now before I continue and head to the database portion of this, I do want to make something perfectly clear. The example that I'm showing is one way to connect to a database. I'm not claiming this would be the most efficient way or the only way. There are multiple ways. In my case, I'm doing something quick and so this is how I'm going to do it. In reality, again, there are multiple ways of connecting to the database and if you if you go online and you look and you actually search, do a, C, uh, a search for C-sharp connecting to database and so forth, access database, whatever, you'll notice that there are a bunch of different ways of doing it. This is just the way that I chose for this example. So I'm going to begin in load fields and I make the assumption that the previous form passed the primary key, the customer ID, in a variable that I call cust ID in this in this context in this uh, in this form, and so I'm going to start with a try catch, just to handle any possible error that could occur, and begin by creating a data set. I'm going to call it cust ds and initializing that. And I'm going to create an OLADB data adapter, call it adapter. And I'm going to initialize this with the SQL command to obtain the specific customer that I'm requesting. In this case, I know the primary key, so it would be that one. So I would say select asterisk from and the name of my table which is customers where customers ID equals and I'm going to pass this that cust ID remember this is over here and was passed by the constructor comma and the connection Once I do this, I'm going to open the connection. And I'm going to fill the data set through the adapter. So I pass it the data set, and then I pass it customers, which is the name of the table. and now I can create a data row which will contain the results of that specific query so this right here will obtain the results of this now keep in mind that in this case it wouldn't make any sense for this to throw an error because if you think about it if I'm in my main form right here and I have data and I select a specific customer and I hit edit I'm going to obtain the primary key so the customers ID from this hit edit and then pass it to this next form over here so in this case this will be correct nevertheless if if for example you you accidentally made a mistake here then this code could crash because this could end up being null meaning you have an empty row there's nothing there so in that case it would produce an error the rest of, of what we're going to do may produce an error okay so at this point what I want to do is take the information from the database and load it onto the GUI and so I can do something like txt address dot text which is a text property for the text box equals row and then the name of the of the field 
dot to string. In this case, the name of the field would be address. But there's a small problem here. This could es essentially give you an error. And so you may want to account for this error without forcing it to get out in here. And the reason is, say for example, somebody entered all of this information, but maybe left address blank. And they just, they may have not known address, address may not be something that's required and so forth. However, what you don't want to do is allow the entire function or method to exit out simply because of one of one row or of one uh, one item. So you can either look to see if this is null and you could do something like if row address is db null. So if it's this, then do something else or not, whatever. Like for example, this in this case, they would do this if it's null. So you may want to, you know, put an else here, and then in this case, do txt address dot text equals blank. So you could do it this way. So it verifies. Oops, not semicolon. So you could verify. Well, if it's null, then set it to blank. Otherwise, load it. Or you could also do this in a try catch. In this, in this case, it would be a nested try catch because you already have a try catch. So you could do this. So if this fails, it's probably because of this, and so it would go over here. This is also a matter of preference. I generally use this instead of the is db null, but again, it's all a matter of preference. By the way, I do want to take a moment to specify something. When I say it's a matter of preference, you've got to understand that as beginners, as you're learning all this stuff, it makes no sense to try to think about what is more efficient, what is less efficient in terms of time. Ultimately, an end user will use your program and either will like it or not like it based on how the product functions in the sense of if it takes too long or if, in the sense of if you designed a good GUI, a good graphical user interface, if it's user friendly, if it's all this type of stuff. Focusing on if an algorithm is 0.0001 second faster than another, that's a whole different level. And at this point, we're really not at that level. So I'm not going to get into too much of, oh, well, this is more efficient or that is more efficient. As long as the code is readable, as long as the code is clean, then it's sufficient at this level. And so continuing on, we will do this for every field. So I'm just going to copy, paste, and then change the stuff that's that I need to. So let's say city and change it here as well and city. Be careful with the spelling here. If you misspelled the when you created the database, then expect to also misspell it here. Otherwise, they don't match. So just be careful with the spelling because it could fail here. And let's continue on. And I'm just going in this alphabetical order because it's easier. And lastly, zip code. And after this, 
you want to take care of the rest of the stuff. So for example, in terms of the exception, if an exception is thrown, I don't really want the user to be able to save. So I may just disable the save button. And I do want to instruct the user as to where the where the error happened or why it happened. And so I'm going to go ahead and call message box show, which will display a message box along with a copy of the error. And I'm going to use a finally so that this code always executes and it's just going to make sure that my connection is closed. At this point, let me go ahead and add the functionality for save. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set was cancelled equal to true. And I'm going to add the functionality, well the basic skeleton at least, for save. And what I want to do is, if it's new, then I want to add customer. And I'm going to create a, a method that handles this functionality. And again, I do this so that Visual Studio can just generate the method for me. Else, edit customer. And once again, allow Visual Studio to do that for me. Now one thing that you'll notice is that this here selects information from a database. This is an actual query. However, when I hit save, the operation on the database is going to be a little bit different. It's not going to be querying the database. It's going to be executing a command against the database. And this is going to happen both for adding the customer and editing the customer. In the case of add, you'll have to it'll have to do something like insert into customers and then you know the, the information and in edit customer it'll have to run an SQL command where it'll be update customers set and then whatever fields based on a condition both of these however are going to execute some are going to execute a command that is basically in C sharp called execute non query and what we can do is create the functionality for that first so I'm gonna go ahead and hit private bool execute SQL statement and it's going to take an SQL command and as always try catch and in this case also finally and maybe add a little bit of a, add some comments And so I'm going to use something called OLADB command to do this. And I'm going to create a new instance of it. And then in my try catch, I'm going to say command dot connection. And I already know my connection because it's here. It's what I instantiated. And then my command type. will be text. My command text will be the SQL which is going to be passed here right there. And I'm going to go ahead and execute my command by opening the connection. and then actually executing it. And notice that this will be execute non-query. And if everything goes well, return true. Otherwise, let's maybe catch the actual exception. And let's show the user what that error was. return false 
Oops. <laughs> but close my connection at the end. And so again, SQL query gets passed to this or SQL statement. Create a command, set the connection, the type, and uh, give it the SQL. Open the connection and execute a non query. And again, the database is not going to return anything as is the case in a select command. That's why we use non query. Then return true if there's an error, show the error, and then return false, and always close the connection. And now we can focus on this, which is the add customer and edit customer. And so this one, what this one's going to do is it's going to update the database based on the GUI elements. And we can get rid of this. This, by the way, is just a placeholder that uh, Visual Studio incorporates when we do that uh, automatic creation of a method and it'll throw a non-implemented exception in the case that you accidentally use it because obviously you haven't provided the um, the functionality or the code for it. So in edit I'm gonna create a temporary variable called SQL and I'm gonna set it to something we'll update that in a bit and then we'll say well if execute the SQL statement with that SQL passed is equal to true then it was added correctly so I'm gonna say message box dot show customer successfully added and maybe call clear fields and that's pretty much it so now I can focus on the actual SQL and <clears throat> so this this will be an update SQL so you'll say something like you'll write something like update and then the name of the table customers and again spelling here is critical you have to make sure that these that the table name and the field names are spelled exactly how you how you spelled them in the database and now I'm going to set and I'm going to set all of the all of these different variables all of these different uh, parameters by the way there's di again this there's def there's different ways of doing this uh, for example, Visual Studio allows you to create parameters and pass these parameters and build the SQL query this way. I just happen to always do it in the way that I'm going to show you. And again, uh, once again, it's just a matter of preference. So I'm going to set uh, field customer name equal to single quote, close double quote, and then txt customer name dot text plus and I need to give it a single quote comma for the next field because I'm building a string this is what I have to do so basically notice that here I have a space and then this plus just this is the same thing as doing this it's just that because I want I want to create it in a different line so it's a little bit more readable then I'm going to close it here and then tell it, hey, I'm continuing this string on this side. At the end of typing all this, you'll get the following. Each field name with the GUI representation of where the data is. So the GUI element is each text box. Very important, because these are strings and not numbers, they require the single quote in between and that's why you see this and then the comma separates each particular field so once this SQL gets gets um, gets executed here it'll return either true or false and you'll be done with that part and add is going to be relatively the same what changes in add is that in this case instead of updating you're inserting into
So in this case, it would be update. Oops, no misspelling there. Update. I'm sorry, not update. Insert into and then the name of the um, table. Customers. And then your values. So let's say you would have customer. I'm sorry, not your values, your your field names. Customer name and so forth. Let's say you were only doing customer name, then you would do this. Values. And then whatever your customer name would be here. In my case, I'm adding all of them. So I'm going to list every single one of them. And because I want it to be a little bit more readable, I'm going to do it this way. Customer name, address, city, state, zip code. And again, all I'm doing is listing every single field that there is. So the end result would be this. Customer name, address, city, state, zip code, phone number, email address, and then a list of values, which would be the same listing, but because I'm, I'm transferring from the GUI to the string, then I add the single quote manually. I add this comma to separate between, it's, it's the same thing as we're doing here, except that since I'm combining that GUI element into the string, then I do it this way with the plus I'm concatenating. And then at the end, I close it off here. If my execute ends up being true, it was successfully added. Otherwise, uh, it would, it would uh, not do anything. And over here, I accidentally put added. This was, should be customer successfully edited. Now notice, it does nothing here because I can mess with the functionality here. So if I wanted to put an error message, I could put it here. If is new, add customer, this returns. Actually, this is not returning, this is doing a void. Let's say I wanted, I wanted to test to see if this was true. Then I could say here, bool, changes to bool. And then if this returns, if this is true, then here return true, else return false, and then give an, an error message here. All of this depends on how you want to build your code and how you want to inform your user that an error occurred. In my case, I'm not really going to get into too many details on that. I just want this to be a, a quick example, so I'm not going to go through that. Lastly, what I want to do is I want to expose the value for was canceled and this is private because obviously since this is a variable I don't want this variable to be accessible from the outside world so what I'll do is I'll just create a read-only variable I'm sorry a read-only property pool was cancelled and this is basically just going to get the value of was cancelled and that's how I expose that to the outside world so that's the end of the code for this for this form for the add form and now we can do the code for this form so in this case I'm gonna call the add functionality call the edit or delete or exit and when I load I need to load this so that's pretty much a functionality for the main form and we're gonna do that right now so the first thing that you should notice is on our skeleton code that we did initially you'll now see this error that says no argument given for the corresponding uh, basically it, it's it's missing those uh, parameters that we created in this constructor so the these have to match it means when I call a new instance when I create a new instance of this class then I need to make sure that I pass these parameters because I don't have a default parameter and this is kind of using a default parameter with nothing so I need to make this match. So what I'm going to do is first rename this to something that's a little bit more useful. So let's say GRD customers. And then edit the code. I'm going to assume that this works at this point. Obviously, it's it, if I run it, it's not because I haven't set this up. But because I want to add the functionality to this, then we can we can go ahead and do that. So when I add, I'm going to call this, 
and if you notice the list it's saying is new so is new is going to be true if it's new then I don't really care what the customer ID is going to be because it's not going to be used so I can put zero and then I need to pass it a connection string so I'm going to call this con string notice I haven't declared this so I have to I have to find a way of declaring that first at some point right now I'm just going to let this error be then this would be the same and then if cuss dot was cancelled meaning if this screen here was cancelled by the user if the user hit cancel what I want to do is avoid reloading avoid reloading the the uh, database information which will I'll show you in a little bit and I want to create load customer data I'm going to create this, allow Visual Studio to generate that code, and we'll do this in a little bit. So that's pretty much how that is going to look. So now let's actually get the, the real functionality of this going. Let's load this up, and let's put the rest of the stuff that we're going to need. So the first thing that I need here is this connection string that I need to pass to the second form. So I'm going to say private string con string and I'll just write my connection string in my case I'm going to go ahead and put this and this is the connection string for a Microsoft Access database so provider equals microsoft.ace.oladb12 be careful with this and with this if you misspell it it'll give you some sort of weird error where you may think that a component is missing or any or something similar to that but it's actually just that there's an error in my case this is the location of my database I'm putting it inside of my startup path and then it's called DAT customers .accdb. so if for example you don't want to put this you could have said something like C you know you could have done this if it was a a specific directory so let's say you created a a specific directory you could call temp and put it in there this would work for you in my case I'm gonna go ahead and leave it how I had it because that's exactly where my database resides also because I'm opening up the database here I need access to this file to the namespace so I'm gonna declare that here so now I can also create my connection variable which will be this and I can initialize all of these in the constructor Oops. So I'm going to set my connection equal to a new connection based on that connection string that I just declared on the top. And I can say load customer data, which is what's going to create the connection between the database and the GUI, obtain the data, and then load the database, uh, load the data grid. Sorry. And so we'll go to the code that we wrote, or we allowed this to write. And we're going to create a try catch just in case. And a finally, because since we're dealing with a database, we need to open and close. So I always put the close in the finally. And I can say dataset custds equals new dataset, and then create the adapter. Now, 
this is very similar to the code we wrote in the other one. So adapter equals new. By the way, one rule of thumb, whenever you notice that one code is very similar to another code, it really means you should generalize it and place it in some somewhere where it's common. This is really the reason why you should separate the layers and um, make it a little bit more efficient so that the, the program itself is scalable. Because this is a very simple example and it's only part one, we're not going to do this here, but in, in reality, in general, we would be placing this in a separate class and allowing a complete disconnect between the methods and the calls to a database and the actual graphical user interface and so forth. All right, so in here, I'm going to load all of my customers. So I'm going to say select asterisk from customers and pass it the connection. And I'm going to open my connection. And after I open my connection, I'm going to fill my data set through the use of the adapter. And then I'm going to set the properties that the data grid is going to need. So in this case, my data grid, my data source property is going to be equal to the data set and the data member is going to be the table name. So I could have just written customers but I could also just do cust.tables zero dot table name which contains the property for that and then I'm gonna make sure that I close the connection here if an error occurs make sure to warn the user and then maybe put some comments here Alright, so this code, what this code does is it obtains a connection to the database and then it loads this. Now notice, if I click add or I click edit or I click delete, I'm going to be either opening up this form, filling the information or editing the information and hitting save, which means after I hit save, after this closes, and it gets back to executing the code here this should be updated if something changed if something did not if nothing changed then it should leave it alone so over here this is why we have this it's because if it was not cancelled that means a customer was added therefore reload the customer data so that the grid has this new information if you don't do this or if you mess up in this part what you'll see is you hit add you add the customer information, you hit save, it goes back and then you see nothing different. You exit the application and you reload it and then suddenly it appears. If you see this behavior, what it means is that you're not reloading the data into, back into the data grid. And so that's what you need to address. For the edit, this will function a little bit differently. When we do an edit, what I need to do is obtain the ID. Now the ID is always going to be the first cell based on how I how I set the database to look. So when I load this, this zero cell in here will be the, the customer ID, then customer name and so forth. And that's just based on the organization of the database tables. However, I don't want to leave this to chance and I don't want to leave this to the organization of the database tables. So what I want to do is actually create a way of setting up the grid so that it so that it suits my specific needs. And what I want to do for this is create a different function, different method. And I'm going to call the method setup grid customers and it's going to take a data grid view
and what I want to what I want to do is it takes a parameter and this is a pass by reference by default all values of methods are passed by value and the reason that I want to pass by reference is that whatever's passed here I don't want it to be a copy of whatever was passed I want it to be that specific item and so whatever modifications I do on grid it should be that exact object that's going to be affected because I use in this case something called an array list I'm going to add system dot collections which is what has has the the stuff for the for the array list that I need. So here I'm going to create an array list and I'm going to call it columns and I'm going to say new array list. And over here just so that I don't forget what I want to do is make a call to the grid to that setup. So I'm going to say setup and I'm going to pass by reference the name of my grid which is DR GRD customers. Again, this is just so I don't forget to call this function method. By the way, you'll notice that I keep saying function. It's just because the first thing I ever, the first programming language I ever uh, learned was C++ and it was called functions. So, but realistically what I do is just interchange <laughs> methods and functions to me are the same thing. There is a distinction at this level. It really doesn't matter. Okay. So I'm going to do a try catch here just to avoid any issues. And if there's any errors, warn the user. OK. And what I want to do is add create columns, text box columns, and add them to the grid. To, I'm going to first add them to an array list and then I'm going to add the array list to the to the grid and what this is going to do is just going to make this visually appealing first but second it's going to give me complete control as to what I want to, to display in my grid I could have done this at design time by clicking here and either setting a data source directly or adding columns and binding them. I choose not to do this just so that this is completely scalable. And the reason is at some point and specifically in part two when we go when we go into the into the end tier design, what I want to be able to do is change the database. I can change it to MySQL, I can change it to SQL Server, I can change it to Oracle, I can change it to, to whatever I want. And it's a matter of changing one class and not having to update the GUI or anything else. It's completely scalable. If I do this, it will not be completely scalable. And I like to have control of this stuff in, in the uh, in the design in the runtime. So I'm gonna create something called data grid view text box column and I'm going to call it column name equal to new data grid view column and I'm going to create I'm going to set a couple of properties so the first one is that the column name dot pro the data property type I'm sorry data property name is going to be equal to the name of my column to the name of my field. The first one that I want to add is that customer's ID field so that I always know that the first column, the one that is in index zero, is always going to be the the, uh, the primary key. That way I can use it in the program to obtain that and pass it to the, to the subsequent forms that are going to use this. So this is going to be called customer's ID and my column name dot header text is just going to be called ID however there's a distinction in this and it's the following this is useless to the user because these primary keys are internally created by the database and are handled by the database and the user the end user doesn't really this this number 
does nothing for them. This is more something for us on the programming side and and the database, obviously, because it creates it and this is the way that it handles um, it handles a product, not a product, it handles a row to be unique. So that's why I set this width equal to zero so that it's not really visible. And I can even say column name dot visible equals false, then it's really not visible. And then I add this to my columns. So columns dot add and then column name. And I'm going to do this for every single column that I need. So I'll we'll copy this. And the second one doesn't need this because it's already declared. So I'm just reusing. And I can change this to customer name. And then it should be displayed as customer name in proper case because this is what's visible to the user. And maybe set this equal to 225 and so forth. And maybe copy this and we'll call this address. And we'll set this equal to address in proper case. And maybe do this one equal to 150. Oops, wait a second. I have to set this equal to true. Or in reality, I could just take it out. Don't really need it. Default is always true anyway. Copy and set this equal to city. And proper case for the visibility. And maybe city will just do 125. And uh, state, state, and set this equal to 75. Zip code, and zip code. 25 as well. Maybe here phone number. And again, be careful with the spelling. Phone number. And uh, let's just put this to 125 as well. And finally, email address. And we'll call this email and after this what we want to do is add each of these elements that is in this array list into the actual grid so for that I'm going to use a for loop and I'm going to just say for int index equals zero to index is less than columns dot count index plus plus and then grid dot oops grid dot columns dot add data grid view text box cell I'm sorry text box column and the reason I have this is I need to typecast it back columns index and you guys can get brownie points if you know why you have to typecast it back and <clears throat> basically the reason is an array list is a list of objects and so when these things get added to the array list it converts to this here into an object so when you add it when you're going to use it you need to typecast it back to its original data type which is a data grid view text box column and that's why you have that after this what i can do is mess with the visual elements just to give it a little bit of a better style things that i like so i can say something like grid dot column header default cell style dot back color equals color dot 
light light steel blue and then we can set the four color to black don't go too crazy on these colors I mean sometimes as programmers we go a little bit crazy on stuff that we do and the reason I say don't go too crazy is because too colory kind of is a little bit off-putting to the user always consider the user softer colors use a little bit of consistency among what each of them does so for example if you have uh, main buttons these should maybe be one format and the, the buttons that aren't main may be a little bit of a different format just to give the the application a good feel all right to save some time I'm gonna go ahead and just fill out the rest of this so I just set these properties up for look and feel and this is important I set the auto generate columns to false so that it doesn't duplicate the columns because when you when you uh, set the data set it'll automatically create the columns with that bind so this eliminates that and it has to be added manually as I see here then allow users to resize I don't allow it I don't allow any of this stuff and again and full grid full row select so that it looks nice when the customer selects something so for example if the user clicks here boom it selects the entire row not just like a piece of it where it doesn't really make sense why it's only selecting a piece of it it's again is this is just for for look and feel so now we can continue with our edit and where is our edit uh, edit is here and so what we're going to do and this is going to require a try catch and here is the reason if you noticed an ad it doesn't really do much in the sense of getting anything it basically just executes and that's it so if you look at ad you know create an instance show it and then that's it in edit you're not really just doing this you're actually interacting so you're interacting with this and then hitting add well what happens if the user did not select anything in it and hit add edit or delete <clears throat> in this case it would cause some sort of error so you need to account for that and that's why in this case this will be in a try catch so maybe move this in here and data grid view row what I'm gonna do is get the actual row that is selected so what I what I do is I call a property in my data grid called selected rows now this selected rows could be multiple and the reason is that a user can select multiple rows by hitting the control button and clicking on each row in my case I want to keep this simple and I only want the first row that was selected to be the one that's going to be used and I'm gonna create a variable called long um, of type long called temp ID and this is going to be equal to the data that's in there so I'm gonna say long dot parse because it's going to be in text format and I'm gonna say row dot cells row dot cells zero which is that first row the customer ID dot value dot two string and so that's why I need to parse it and by the way this is what can create the error if nothing is selected and I try to execute this it's going to give me a, a an error so that's why the try catch here is important after that I can say well f is new as false which means that the customer ID is important but now I know it because it's in this variable temp ID so I put temp ID and then my connection string is up up on the top and it's called con string and then I can do the custom show dialog so if cust dot was cancelled is equal to false then I know for a fact that something must have changed so I'm gonna call back my load customer data 
And if an error occurred, just make sure you keep your user informed. And finally, we can go ahead and deal with the delete. Now, delete is very similar to the add and the insert. I'm sorry, to the insert and the edit. So the update SQL uh, query or the insert into SQL query from the previous from the previous form from from this one. So you know you're probably going to have to execute an SQL command against the database, and so we need to take that into account. We also know that it could also generate an error, <coughs> same as the edit. If the user hits delete and nothing is selected, it should it would probably hit an error. Also, you never want to delete a record without first confirming that it's an action that the user actually wants to take because they may have hit delete by mistake. And so if something is selected, they hit delete by mistake, then a record is deleted and you can't recover it back. So you always want some sort of confirmation. So let's go ahead and add the functionality to that. And we'll do our try catch in the event that an error does occur. And because we know we have to deal with the database to open it, we'll definitely have a finally. And then let's just go ahead and add the message box.show ex.message and write our code. So I'm going to need this thing called a dialog result, which is going to obtain the result from a message box that I that I showed to confirm if the user really wants to uh, delete the record or not. So we'll leave that here for now. And I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did in edit, which is obtain the temp, the, the customer ID. So I'm just going to copy this code into here. And now I'm going to say result equals, which is this dialog result, message box dot show and then are you sure that you want oops, to delete the selected item and comma this is just the header confirm and then look at the options message box buttons dot and I'm gonna say yes no so these are the two options that the user has. Either they say yes or they say no. And so if result is equal to dialog result yes, it means that they did confirm, then go ahead and execute the code. Else, there is really no else. It just falls out and exits or closes. By the way, if I do this, actually, this would be an error. And here's why. If I close the database connection here first, I would need to declare it on top here, number one. And number two, say I did that here, then I would open it here on this if, but close it always because finally always executes. So in this case, we actually don't need the finally. Okay, so if this is the case, Olay DB command, same as before. Command equals new all ADB command I'm going to set the connection parameters and the connection parameters are command dot connection dot open and that opens the connection I'm sorry. No, 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 no. The connection equals God. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay. And then command dot command type equals command type dot text. And then command dot command text is going to be my delete query. So in this case, I would say delete from customers 
where customers ID equals and then my temp ID which again is here and that is the customer ID or customers ID or customers underscore ID to be very specific and I'm going to execute it here so command dot connection dot open then command dot execute non query and then command dot connection dot close and also call my load customer data and that would be it one thing that I did forget to do was here well, let me show you from this part when save is is clicked I need to close this dot close and there is one more typo if we go back into load fields this cus ds here is a typo. It's actually supposed to be cus id. Yeah, that's what happens when you select the when you do this. You name them very, very similar. You see how easy these two could be convinced, con uh, confused. <clears throat> ds is the data set. Customer id is this one. So that that would cause an error. So now, if we want to test our application, let's go ahead and hit F5 to run it. Test customer. And uh, let's put any phone number here save so customer successfully added and and look how nice it looks in terms of the data grid and I can add another one and just put anything in. and there it is and say I want to edit the second one so I'm gonna hit edit test second and I save this and there it is and let's say I want to delete this first one. So delete, no, and then delete, yes. And there it is. So that's how this application works. <clears throat> so the second part of this uh, series will be how to create an N tier application from this. So we're going to completely separate the layers. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a note on the, on the YouTube channel, and I will try to answer it as quickly as possible. Thank you for watching.